Hello, good morning. I hope that everybody is well and that you've had a good week. Um, I'm filming this video a little bit later in the, the morning than I normally do um, and the sun is coming through uh, at a very strange angle so I do apologise for the beams of light that's going to pass over the screen. Um, I'm running behind this morning because yesterday I just lost myself in the research and the writing of a booklet for a very, very special sampler that's going to be releasing, I hope, um, by Christmas time, but I don't know. Everything in this country is slowing down, um, but you know, I'm hoping my printers are going to come up trumps for me and we can get this very, very special sampler available to you soon. Um, I'm sure my proofreader was really surprised to wake up this morning and to see an email sent um, in the early hours of this morning with a new booklet, but I was on a roll. <laughs> um, I've got no needlework, um, also a current project to show you this week, but in this video I have got a lot of very interesting things to show you. So bear with me. Um, I might go around it in a curious way, but we've got a lot of interesting things to look at. Um, this week we went back to Wales. We come from Wales. It's where our family lives. And um, in um, you know, all the lockdowns of COVID, we haven't been able to travel back to Wales because much of the time, the border between England and Wales has been closed for social visits. Um, we were very anxious to get back to Wales because during lockdown, Ray's sister, who has had Alzheimer's for quite some time, um, needed to go into a nursing home. And although, you know, you speak via um, Zoom, there's nothing like actually spending time with people, being able to give them a hug, you know, to see them. And <clears throat> it was very sad to see her uh, in uh, w with, with this advanced Alzheimer's. But it was also so lovely to see that the home that she's in, it's a beautiful home and they're taking exceptionally good care of her. And she's very happy and very contented. We couldn't see our daughter and her family because um, a week ago, or a week or so ago, I should say, <clears throat> she came down with COVID and um, our grandson has subsequently had COVID as well. And we couldn't risk Ray catching COVID and coughing and sort of causing more damage to his neck. So we're gonna go back up in December. But um, Ray treated me to a stay at Thornbury Castle. And I love history, and I particularly love Tudor history. And this castle was owned by Henry VIII, and Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn had actually stayed in the castle. Now, we couldn't stay in their bedchamber because that was already booked, but we had um, a really lovely room in the historic part of the castle, and it was just a wonderful experience. Um, my husband, he's such a sweetheart. He had his scan last week, so this forthcoming week we should have an update on his condition. But he is feeling a lot, lot better. And I had to laugh this morning, <clears throat> though I was cross, I had to laugh. <clears throat> I came into this room and I found a putter, a can of dog food and two golf balls. So he's obviously been practising his putting on the rug and he should not be doing that at all with his neck. So um, there will be a few words a little bit later on, but he always makes me smile. I can never be serious with him. Anyway, let's start to talk about needlework, which is really why um, you have um, taken the time to um, listen to my floss tube. This week, we had a new release. Mary Snow and this sampler. I just love her colours. Um, that green and red, it's so Christmassy.
sort of conjures up images of Christmas as well. Um, I wish that Mary had put uh, more information on her sampler, but there is no date and no location, so it's very, very difficult. Um, well, it's impossible to find Mary Snow. Um, like, this sampler was stitched during the reign of Queen Victoria, but we can't sort of give you any more background information than that. Um, Mary Sampler um, was stitched with 12 um, shades of Overa Soise, Soise 103. I love using that silk. Um, how it feels on your needle and as you stitch, it is so, um, it's music for the soul. It really is. It's just wonderful. But we also provide in the booklet a conversion for Soir d'Alger and for DMC. And in the booklet, um, we have split the thread usage um, down uh, into various categories. So we cover um, one strand, two strands. We go from 28, 36, 40, 46, and 56 count linen. So we're hoping that we're catering within our booklets for needle workers, um, personal preferences of um, linen count and type of um, thread used. There's nothing um, more sort of um, frustrating to um, stitch a project and not have enough uh, thread or to have surplus thread left over. Um, and we have really, really tried with our booklets to make them inclusive and not exclusive. This little project for Mary, um, you can stitch this on Ada, Linada or Ada. She uses just two different stitches, cross stitch over two and four sided stitch. And it is her name that is stitched in four sided stitch. In the booklet, we provide you with comprehensive instructions and stitch diagrams for the cross stitch and the four sided stitch. Four sided stitch, it's a really fun little stitch to use. And um, that's how it will look on the front. And you have a cross on the back. Um, and the stitch diagram shows you how to move around to form that square. The um, linen we used for um, Mary was uh, from Exdew Designs and it was Old Sheep. It's a lovely colour of linen. Her uh, stitch count is 210 by 167 stitches. A really nice size sampler. Um, and this sampler is just a lovely one to stitch um, in the build up to Christmas. The colours are so Christmassy. Um, I love the red in the sampler. Red is um, it's a, a colour that lifts your mood. If ever I'm a little bit down, I always put on a red pair of shoes. That really helps lift me if I'm feeling a little bit down. Um, there's a lot of red um, on the tables today, actually. Um, okay, um, talking about um, colour and thread and how it makes you feel. Um, on uh, one of my floss tubes, there was a lovely comment left and um, it really was a, a poem that was left. And I wanted to read to you part of the words um, because as a needle worker, you will get this. There is no conversation. This is her time. The only sound that breaks the silence as she stitches is the sound of the stitch itself. Subtle, almost silent, as the silence itself is the passing of needle and floss through the linen. A satisfying non-sound, yet perceivable only by the artist who cherishes these silent moments. I thought that was so beautiful and so true. And yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I 
haven't got this sampler here to show you, um, but there has been a sampler released in the States in which I was involved. Um, for those of you who sort of know me, uh, you will know that some of my best friends um, live in the States and um, somebody who I get to spend not enough time with, but, you know, good time with, is Melissa Gay and Deborah uh, Maggot. Um, we have so much fun together. And um, when was it? It was... When I was in Nashville last, which was 2020, just before we went into lockdown, um, Melissa and Deborah took me to Rock Castle, which is a historic home in Tennessee. Now, whenever I link up with Melissa. She always takes me and Ray, if he's with me, um, on these wonderful excursions to um, see the real America uh, from an American's point of view. And that's what we love. Um, that's how we like to travel, to see um, the country from the uh, from the view of the country. And Melissa's taken us to some fabulous places. But anyway, she took me to Rock Castle uh, because she wanted to show me a sampler that's in Rock Castle's collection. And it is the beautiful Alethea Saunders. And um, Melissa and Deborah, they wanted to um, raise money for Rock Castle and they asked me if I would become involved with a project to reproduce Alethea Saunders so that uh, she could be used as a fundraiser for um, Rock Castle and I looked at the sampler and I said yes of course I will help you and um, we have been working on this project uh, for quite some time um, via um, Facebook Messenger, via Zoom, via photographs. Um, because of lockdown, I could not get back to Rock Castle. So um, I've been involved in this project and my involvement basically was to chart the sampler. Um, Melissa um, chose the colours because she could access the sampler in person at Rock Castle and um, Melissa uh, stitched the model um, for um, Alethea and Deborah did all the historical research and uh, the compiling of the uh, the the booklet um, for uh, the sampler. So it's very much um, a um, a project um, shared amongst friends, and we've had great great fun putting this together for you. Um, Melissa and Deborah a little while ago did a presentation at Rock Castle, which I would have loved to have been, but they very kindly um, sent me lots and lots of photographs from the day so that I could um, enjoy um, the experience as well. Alethea Saunders is available as a PDF download and she is on the Rock Castle's website. And, um, if you go into the description of this floss tube, you will see the link so that you can access um, the information and purchase the uh, project uh, and it'll be a, a, a download. The sampler is priced at $20 and the, all the proceeds from the sales goes to um, Rock Castle, um, which um, is an amazing place to visit. Now. Um, I wish I had the model here to show you, uh, but I haven't. So I'm just going to um, read a little bit of information about Alethea. Um, the Revolutionary War Brigadier General Daniel Smith was Alethea Saunders' grandfather. Um, 11 year old Alethea Saunders Sampler was returned to Rock Castle by her third great granddaughter, Grace Alethea Austin Tompkins of Gallatin, Tennessee. 
Alethea Saunders' prominent family members were early founders of both the state of Tennessee and the nation. Growing up on the banks of the Cumberland River, Alethea was a neighbour to President Andrew Jackson who helped raise her older brothers. The design has been charted for needleworkers of all abilities and for stitching on both Ada and linen. There are two versions of um, Alethea. There is the um, one for stitching on linen and then a modified one to be stitched on Ada. The thread legend includes DMC, Overa Soir 103 and Overa Soir d'Alger. The model was stitched on um, mocha linen from Weeks Dye Works and um, the stitch count is 177 by 200. A Lethia sampler is highlighted in the Tennessee Sampler Survey um, and the floral border on a Lethia sampler is also found on a group of samplers from the Carolinas. Pat Vesey's article, Samplers of the Carolina Piedmont, the Presbyterian Connection and the Bethel Group, published in the Journal of Early Southern Decorative Arts, describes this group and their connection to Tennessee. Um, okay, so um, if you would like to um, stitch this sampler or just to... Um, contribute to the fundraiser for his um, rock castle um, you know follow the link in the description of this email um, Deborah and Melissa have worked so hard um, on this project um, and um, what they did as well they um, arranged for or, or got involved in conserving the sampler um, it was taken out of uh, its frame and it was mounted on uh, to a linen on acid free board and it was reframed with museum glass so that um, hopefully that sampler will stay in its present condition for generations uh, of needle workers to admire um, in the future. So uh, I was uh, very honoured to be involved in the project. My part was very small but um, it was still fun and I do hope that when I'm in Nashville in March that um, I will get to see um, the model alongside the original. Um, it was a wonderful experience visiting uh, Rock Castle. Um, it was a very interesting uh, property to visit and the uh, custodian there and his wife were really super people who gave us so much time on that visit. Anyway, uh, so that's another uh, thing. Um, this little sampler, um, it's so pretty, I just love the colours on this sampler. Um, this is a model that I've laced this week. I've actually laced five samplers um, to go to the framers on Tuesday. Um, this model was stitched by Linda, uh, who is based in the UK. Um, the colours are just amazing on this sampler. So, so pretty. This one won't be available until, well, towards the end of next year. We have a backlog of models that we need to release. We've all been so busy in lockdown. Um, this sampler came uh, this week and I just adore it. Uh, it was stitched by Fanny Bramley when she was 10 years of age and it's Remember Now Thy Creator in the Days of Thy Youth, which I think is a fabulous uh, sentiment to stitch on this sampler. Um, I love the border, it's so unusual and um, I can't wait to actually chart this sampler and pull those colours, beautiful, beautiful colours. Um, one of the things I really loved about Fanny was the amount of history there was with this sampler and, and I love this, we have a picture of Fanny. I just think that's so, so lovely. And um, she has such kind eyes. 
she looks like a really um, lovely person. Like, I know you can't really tell from appearances, but when I looked into her eyes, I just thought, oh, that is just so lovely. And then there is a picture of Fanny um, as um, the matriarch of her family. I just think that is just so lovely. I love all the background history that comes with samplers and this one is very, very rich. Um, we've got her death certificate, her marriage certificate, her birth certificate, all the census returns. And what's really, really exciting, um, this all came from Fanny's um, great, great granddaughter. Um, so this has stayed in the family and the family um, put together all this information about the sampler and also it's believed that Fanny has a connection to the Duchess of Portland. Um, it may be that she worked at Welbeck Abbey and I'm going to look forward to following that little sort of teaser through to see if there's any truth in it. So this is a sampler that you have to look forward to um, in the years ahead. Um, I have some goodies come in the post uh, this week, but so many of you have had goodies arrive too. Um, we've been seeing Esther arrive uh, with needleworkers around the world, and the uh, thread packs, the colours on Esther are mouthwatering. This is such a beautiful sampler and this sampler you really have to see it to um, appreciate the sense of colour, the intricate um, patterns in some of the geometric motifs in this sampler. It's such a pretty one and this is the follow-on uh, stitch along from Anne Morrison and I think that um, needleworkers are going to get a lot of pleasure out of working on this sampler through 2022. Rose Heck is leading the stitch along as she did for Anne Morrison and um, I think we're going to have a lot of fun with this sampler. It's going to be a fabulous one for your sampler wall at the beginning of 2023 when we're all going to have these finished projects to hang on our walls. Um, Rose, Ada, Featherstone, um, Kathy and David, I think they've shipped over a thousand kits for this project now and that is just a logistical, um, an amazing logistical feat. Um, access commodities have been wonderful. Um, they've been going like the clappers to fulfil the silk orders for this sampler. But also, don't forget, you can stitch this sampler in DNC and you can stitch this sampler um, in wool. Um, there is the conversion for wool and Kathy is kitting up in wool as well. Um, if you want a copy of Rose Ada Featherstone, I can't stress this enough, there are not that many copies left of this sampler. And if you live in the UK or outside America, and I am shipping this, the booklets to you, I can tell you now, I only have 16, that's one six booklets left. Um, obviously, um, you can also, uh, well, all of these have to be ordered through Hobby House. I'm just shipping the UK, uh, the European and the Australian orders because of the problems and the expense of getting things out of America. Um, this has been landed in Australia now, so uh, it's lovely to see the number of Australian stitchers who are stitching this sampler. So um, yeah, if you want it, now is the time. Otherwise, there's going to be a lot of disappointed people. Um, what else? What else? Talking about Australia, I had the most amazing uh, gift arrive in the post. And I had two boxes arrive like this together. and. 
it, they were so beautifully packed. But when I opened the one, I thought, I'm going to keep the second one to open on my floss tube because um, the way it was wrapped was so beautiful. Um, okay, so um, it's just perfection. And there is nothing like receiving a beautifully wrapped gift. Even the string is um, pretty. It's multicolored. Now, I'm not going to be able to open that, so I have brought a pair of scissors ready just to snip the, um, the thread or the string that holds it. There are these lovely uh, little um, thread cards tucked into the string. Um, they are, I believe, um, well, actually, they show the name of the uh, store, which is Lucello, and it's in Melbourne, Australia. And this is from my dear friend, Sandra. Uh, we always like to spoil each other on the lead up to Christmas. So that was a lovely touch. Um, let's just open this now. It's really lovely to find um, a store that go to um, great lengths to present their products so nicely. Um, and it's worth going to have a look at this store, um, Nucello's. Um, I will put a link for the store in um, the description of this video as well. I'm sorry to be taking you so long, but I just wanted to share the experience of opening this parcel with you. So you open it up and then it's wrapped in another layer of tissue. And it's a double layer of tissue. Then inside we have these little boxes. They're absolutely beautiful. And inside there's more tissue. So these are little storage boxes. Um, and they are just so, so beautiful. And um, this is the other one. This is the one I opened and all the tissue was coordinated with these colors. So that's the card. And then this is the um, other box that came. Well, that was the tissue that was wrapped around. Isn't that pretty? Um, Sandra uses one of these to store um, needlework goodies in. And I'm going to do that with one of them. And then the other one I'm going to use to uh, keep little treasures in. Um, maybe some of my love letters from Ray and special birthday cards and anniversary cards that I've sort of kept over the years. I just think um, a little chest of um, treasures, these are perfect for. And they look so pretty arranged in a craft room or in a bedroom. Um, so thank you, Sandra. You always choose the most beautiful of presents. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that experience. Um, I was so thrilled when I opened it. I just couldn't believe how beautiful they are and how beautifully wrapped they were. Um, what else came in the post? Well, new linen. And the first one I'm going to show you, this is a brand new colour. And um, I'm quite chuffed to say this was dyed at my request. Um, it's by um, Tabby Cat Linen. And this is Zweigart based over dyed linen and it's called Cornish Mizzle. And um, a mizzle is um, when it's an overcast, drizzly type of day that we see in Cornwall. And I was explaining to Michelle what colour I wanted, and as soon as I said Cornish Mizzle, 
Michelle knew exactly the colour I wanted and um, she's dyed this beautiful piece of fabric for me and she's called it Cornish Mizzle. Um, I have a project waiting for this linen. Um, so, so beautiful. That's going to look fabulous when it's stitched on. Um, so um, that's a new colour from Tabby Cat Linen. And if you wish to order um, linen from um, Michelle, um, Tabby Cat Linen is sold on her Mill on the Floss website, which is her website where she sells her reproduction samplers. But I do know that um, the Attic Needleworks is now stocking Tabby Cat Linen. So if you live in the States, you can contact Jean for Tabby Cat Linen. But Michelle, who is British, based in France, she ships all around the world. And if you are based in the UK, Michelle is back and forth between France and the UK all the time. So, you know, you can come to an arrangement with her that maybe, um, you know, you can have access to her linen in the UK rather than France. Um, Michelle, um, her studio is in Normandy, France, and you know she says that she is an artisan business, and all of her linen is dyed in small batches using industry standard textile dyes and fixatives. Um, she also says that. Um, when you over dye fabric, um, there are lots of different um, conditions that can affect the colour and she's right about that. Um, and she says that when you purchase linen, if you have companion pieces that you want to stitch in the same linen, that it's a good idea to order a piece of linen that's large enough for those projects. Because really, um, when you're over dyeing linen and you know giving it this beautiful grungy aged effect no two pieces are exactly the same and you know she is right on that um okay so this is cornish missile and then i have got two other new colors for me um the first one is ragamuffin and this has been um, this is Swigart that's been over dyed and it's 46 count linen and it's beautiful I can't wait again to put this um, use this for a project isn't that lovely I the light today is very odd here um, so I don't know how well this is showing up but this is really really beautiful really nice so this one is ragamuffin love the name ragamuffin and then we have foxed parchment and this is 47 count on a, a ricamo base and this is oh, i just love this Those colours are fabulous. I hope that you're picking up those colours, but I actually have a sampler that was stitched on um, Fox Parchment, and that is the Friends sampler that Michelle stitched for me. See, we've got our names on the bottom. Um, Michelle Moulon, 2021 for Nicola Parkman. It was all about friends. Friends are the flowers in the garden of life. They fill the world with beauty. And that is so, so true. If you would like to stitch the friends sampler, um, this is available on Mill on the Floss Samplers website. Um, okay, so do I have anything else to talk about? Um, I think that probably is everything. Mm.
I knew there was something I was going to forget. I have so many requests um, to include the dogs in the video. Um, there's not a lot of room in this little section to have the dogs and I've got needlework out. But I've just cleared everything away and I've let the dogs come in. Um, Bertie's such a lovely boy. Aren't you a lovely boy? You are, and you are so good with your brother, aren't you? Hugo, come and say hello. Hugo, Hugo, come on, come and say hello. What have you got? Have you got one of Daddy's golf balls? Hugo, come here, come on, come and say hello. Come and say hello. Oh, look, a golf ball, and that's dangerous because you could swallow that. He's a big boy. He's as tall as Bertie. He just needs to fill out now. Don't you? You need to fill out. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they're both really, really well. And they give us so much pleasure. And you've got muddy feet. I've got mud on my rug. The joys of dog ownership. I've always got to stop and think. Because quite often, I finish a video and I think, I forgot to talk about that. Um, thank you everybody for listening to me. Um, I hope um, in my next video uh, that Sue and maybe Elizabeth will join me. Elizabeth um, is a very dear friend. Uh, she's appeared on Floss Tubes with me before. She's arriving on Friday and she's going to be staying a month, which is such a lovely treat to have her and John with us. Um, we've got lots of adventures planned uh, and one of those adventures, um, Sue, Elizabeth and myself are travelling up to the Cowslip Studios in Warnston to meet another friend Angie for lunch and to do some Christmas shopping at the Cowslip Studios and of course I can never go to Cowslip Studios without taking some photographs of the fabulous quilts that Jo Covell has in her store and we will share that adventure um, with you. Um, okay, I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead and um, until next week, stay safe, stay well. Bye-bye.